Hello everybody, my name's Tris and this is Double O'Neill and you're watching episode number 49. What are we up to today? Well, let's take a little look. I think you're going to enjoy it. But then the production ones, no, they, that was drops and just had the normal normal lights and mm. things on it. So it changed, but, but just like the, the, the old original it's prototype. It's got a uh, grey chassis and bogies and everything. Yes. Yeah. Just for... So there was the rock work, as you saw last time, I built up the plaster that went over the top of it. So with that wrap that you saw that I got from Hobbycraft, is that one pound for a set of the bandage. That went on there previously and you saw what I got to as well as the plaster rock that we'd stuck in place and that was it. Whereas on this episode, uh, it's a case of painting it, weathering it, making it look kind of good, well trying to make it look good with all my skills, um, we're always learning aren't we? And then it's a case of let's get some static grass and then make it look fun and good and we'll get some foliage on trees and we'll just see how it looks at that and it's not to be finished um, on this episode but it's a case of getting some colour into it because we get used to looking at browns and the track colour you know, that nickel colour so with that going in the ballast not being the only thing, we now introduce some greens and greys and stuff like that. It's it's fun for me, and I guess uh, fun for you guys uh, having a watch as well, watching it progress. Because the biggest problem for me, as I'm guessing for some of you, is having the confidence to just have a go and do it. And I realised if it goes wrong, as I've said to you before, I can get a, a flat screwdriver or you know a scraper, and I can just chisel it all off, and we just have another go until it looks okay. So I thought, right, let's just do it. I've got the foliage that's going on as well uh, afterwards to kind of create the, the bushes. I have the dark undergrowth of the different wooden scenics products. Um, and so that was really, really cool. I went to Wellingborough Model Centre, uh, Model Railway Shop. I'm not sure the name of the shop. I'll pop a bit of his website on here. Popped in there and I've got a load of different foliages. I've got some trees as well as I picked up um, some other bits, but I'm going to talk about that on another episode. Got so much going on that I want to talk to you guys about, but I want to keep it um, relevant to the video. Anyway, so with that all talked about, we'll go into that in a bit, but first we're going to go see my dad. He bought some new locos a little while ago and hasn't run them. And I think you'll enjoy them, watching them go, but we only ran it on certain parts of his layout because his main layout is having some work done to it at the moment and he hasn't quite finished that. So we just ran on the lower lines. So we've got kind of some simple shots going on, but it was nice to talk about them. We had some fun and it was nice to spend some time with him as it always is. Anyway, so let's have a watch of that. Um, and then after that, we'll talk a bit more about the rocks. So we're here in my dad's garage, thought I'd catch up with you. So you haven't managed to do much on the railway since no. we last talked, but you told me you've got some locos you haven't run yet. Yeah, there's a few, a few bits and pieces. So what we have so, here? I've got this. Um, well, there's a Deltic, which is I got from um, Gaydon at one of the electric train shows. Okay. Like Warmly ones, but one of the, the original prototype Deltics. I see, I so, see. It's got American kind of style to that, yes, isn't it? it's got the bulb on the front oh. and sort of American style, so... Um, That's great. But then the production ones, no, they, that was drops and just had the normal normal lights and mm. things on it. So it changed, but, but just like the, the, the old original it's prototype. It's got a uh, grey chassis and bogies and everything. Is yes. that just for them making it look pretty? Yeah, I suppose so. Just the English, English electric prototype, yes. mm. yeah. That's great. Yeah. I've not actually seen oh. one like that. I've seen the... Just actually more, the, more the pictures normal, of them. The normal ones, yeah. yes. But, yeah. Oh, that's really great. Yeah, if you don't see, I'm just in this one goes out and about. I think it's just in the, you know, the museums and that's mm. it, up in York or wherever. 
because no, it's in York. Yeah. What would that have pulled? Just goods and passenger. Well, pass- passenger from sort of King's Cross to so, Scotland to Edinburgh, sort of thing. And that's because it was fast. So it was the A fours, that sort of thing. All oh, right. So it was yeah. that early because it was yeah, the six, sixties. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Or even I don't know if it's even earlier. No, I think it was early early sixties. The Vulcan Works job where that was all getting done. I don't know. I remember seeing there was, there was a company that um, that was doing the development for the diesels and everything, but maybe I'm completely wrong. Yeah, um, I know it's English electric. Well, it's English English electric, one, isn't it? Is it going to be written on the back of it, or is it nothing yeah, on this one? Probably has. Um, it says about Shildon. So we do some fast reading. No, it doesn't really say anything. No. To do, but that's fine. I can pop up some some words. Yeah, have a have a look, well, you can have a look up, can't even yeah. can see, yeah. That's great. Right, so, that was, so we can run that with something in a bit. We yeah. can do that on the big passenger chain then, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's coached on for that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got these two here. You said they're a set. Well, or they you, make up what well, is we did sell them as a set. Okay. So I had that for my birthday, an I see. H class. Okay. So B, that's B, a... BR version. Okay. And I also thought they were sort of quite cute. Yeah. And then had, cute, so... I saw these a while ago. No, mm. I've got some time ago. BR, this is the two coaches, a push pull coach. I think one's got the, the windows in the end mm. for the push pull part, and the other one's just a standard coach modified to take the linkage through. So, I see. Um, but it's the ones the same to go with. And these are the Mark ones? Um, no, um, Monsel. Monsel, oh, okay, so there's nothing to do with the. No, um, I'm not sure it's Mark I was just assuming, well, from my thing, learning recently that there's Mark 1s, Mark 2s, Mark 3s, but this is a different... This is pre, pre-BR, pre pre-nationalisation, so it's just okay. standard southern coaches, but they're in BR. And that's they're why they're, they're green and everything. Yeah, but say they would have been in the southern olive. And, or, and that's a southern or, engine as that, well? That's a southern engine, okay. a BR livery. Okay. Because this, cool. this push, push-pull set was, um, say, in... BR, so I thought okay. I'd better get one of those. I've got a Southern M7, but yeah. it wouldn't have been correct to go with, with these. So. Okay, so we've got a nice set that could be pulled around on that one as yeah. well. That'd be nice. That was okay. the other thing. So we get them out in a bit. And then you've got and, this and then nice there's this, this set I've never used. So when did you um, get this then? Cool. A few years ago, one, one Christmas, I seem to remember, what a, at a toy fair, yeah. like, chatting to one of the local guys that we knew there. Mm. and. Um, no, it's on his stand, so oh, um, that's great. No, we uh, got that, but it's just the 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 pannier, two coaches, and a and a building. In okay, the set. Is, is it like a Scaredale building? Is it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, it's the back. It's a Backman one. So okay. Is it Scaredale? Oh, it's, it's that the kind of style. Oh, it's the one. Yeah. 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 It's whatever Backman's okay. version is. Yeah. We'll get so, some shots of that in there. So that's. Oh, that's nice. That's the box set there. But we put some clips in, I guess, whilst we're yeah, chatting. Doesn't have any figures in, so there's no sort of Jenny Agatha or oh, any of the others in there. Yeah. Isn't it? Well, you get a picture of I them think... on the front of it. Yes, you get the, yeah. Yeah, you get them there. Yeah. 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 Oh. And pinups, yeah. I guess, from back in the day. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Okay. Well, I guess we can we get them out and do yeah. some running with. Mm. Have a look. That was mm. it. It's one I kept meaning to. Yes, yeah, the marks on the wheels it's or anything. Same, so. it's a fifty-seven pannier, you know, with the um, you know, the old it's fifty-seven nice colouring, like with that chocolateiness, you know, it's yeah, it, all the chassis, yeah. everything, it's all got the mm. nice colouring mm. to it. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Okay, I'll put that one on going that we've way. Gotta go, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. Left is going that way, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Because you got. Don't want to break one. the rules. I let them out it last time I was in here, didn't I? Oh. At which way things should go. Oh. And what's the rule for coaches? Is there ever any rule? Uh, but I guess the break, the, the guards van goes at the back, not guards van, yeah, but the that's at the back. And some some of the sets have the they're left and right handed. So yeah, because on some line they've got a big window and then small windows. Yes, yes, like that. Okay. In fact, these are so, what does that mean then? For is it the station look, side? Is the looking at that? It's the corridor. So that would be the you tend. To, I should imagine that would be the more the platform okay. side, wouldn't it? If um, that makes sense. Like when yeah, we to dig the, you can see the corridor in there. Yes. Yeah. And then the although they've got doors on the other side, so you could get on that way. But, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's for social distancing. They're allowing them to uh, <laughs> just stay in their bits. We can add bits during it. I was thinking oh. I can uh, use some of our chatting. Yeah. Oh. 
still need to I'll put it that way so they're all the same under pressure it's hard to get the wheels on isn't mm. it I need one of those railers like you got me for the Hornby double and stuff oh okay and well, you realise I got you one of them yeah there's a what's in that in that I see right, so there's so that yeah. and then put that that's fine I'll just right. yeah it's the first Deltic I had a model that came with corn Free with cornflakes, I think it was in back in the sixties. Free with cornflakes, that's fantastic. It was, a, it was a well, no, it's a kit, only a kit master model kit. Yeah, but it was with so many cornflake packets, sort of thing. How many cornflakes did you have to eat? Oh, I, I don't know, about yeah. half. Of, I don't know, probably about six, I should think. Then you got a free um, <laughs> day, um you didn't get that now, would you? It would have been a kit master. It was a kit master Delta. Mm. Before I think before even Airfix came along. That's cool. a good looking engine, isn't it? Even got it on the out. That was the first time, Dad, that it's yeah. dropped on. Yeah. First. Okay. Uh, this is the 044. Yeah, the. Oh, eight. has it got tape on it? Then? It shouldn't do. I've had the. Okay. Oh, got a <laughs> start. It's tight. On. Yeah, got a start on it. You still want to damage your box, do you? It's the thing, it's so no. nice. There it goes. So it's like it's people proof more than child proof. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they uh, got the tolerances of the box building along with that one. Because you're in the camera, that's why it's. Oh, yeah. I've, I've taken it out before anyway, so mm. just to have a look, but then haven't run it out here yet. Yeah. It gets a nicer lighting actually, so you've got lights in front. Because when you stand there, oh, yeah. the light's not very good there. And normally yeah. you're looking at the railway like this. So you've always got a shadow onto whatever you're looking at. Zoom Is that. it broken? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't you notice got that a, a loose bit on it. Yeah, if I can rest on there for now. I yeah, we'll just be careful. Yeah, don't don't lose it. No. Yeah. It might, I didn't, unless it's Is there anything to... underneath it that you can access? No, it's just like no. some wires. Yeah. Maybe it's it must have been... Oh, I'll have to stick that yeah. on. As long as it doesn't get lost as it goes round. Have you got any blue tack? Not, you can out, just not out here, it. but just, okay. take it, just take it easy. Be. Yeah, we'll just run it around slowly. Yeah. I'm concerned for you, Dad. Yeah. Well, it hasn't we'll got see a, if it wobbles off. It hasn't got a coupling in, so... Um, okay, so you can put a little coupling on. Stick one in. What? Let's go over there. Minus. Reminds me of minus um, Gordon dome. when he lost his dome. Never trust domeless engines, said a voice from somewhere behind him. They aren't respectable. Mm. You're like, can't trust domeless engines, I think was on his thing. Right, that? Right, so we've got our lovely uh, Southern Railway or BR coaches. So I didn't really have the correct engine to, to pull them. So I see. Is really it a justification for uh, buying another engine? Oh yes. But I couldn't really say justify buying the, the whole the train pack at the time, so I just got the coaches yeah. and sort of get the M7 or H or whatever later yeah. on. That's a nice looking engine. Mm. We'll find out if the dome yeah. stays on today. Yes. Well. It can't go very far, so just we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, it's, it's quite a big room actually. Like, I remember when I used to lose Percy down the back of the railway, it's always mm. hard to get hold of. Right. Alright, so I go the other way. Okay. We know it ran okay, but it went. So it's going into the, into the tunnel, and then. Um, ah, no. Right runner. Mm. So running it one way, we had some trouble with it coming off. Uh, we've managed to stick our dome down. It's nice, eh? Yeah. yeah. Ok, 
Okay, let's bring it back. Yeah, does it run as nicely as uh, your other ones, does it? No. So maybe we can demonstrate what it does when we go the other way, when we're pulling it. Oh yes. Yeah, go down there and then... Okay. Oh, did they really roll quite far, Dad? Oh! <laughs> you didn't push them that far. Yeah, the, the rear bogeys seem to be a bit of a pain. Is there oh, it piv actually pivots. pivots the pivot on, from the front. Pivots or? on there. I see. Yeah. It's not so very good, is it? It seems to look. have some trouble. Well, it's I a mean, nice looker, but it doesn't seem to run so nicely. Well, not as nice as you'd expect. No, but yeah, I'm you can pick up these coaches. But as long as you use it the other way, yeah. it's, it'll, it'll be okay. Hmm? As long as it's not the bogey pulling that has the load on it. Hmm. I mean, my track work's not perfect, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, but your other ones don't come yeah, off on it. Yeah, the other things are right. Oh. Okay. It looked like we're connected, so... Right, we're all connected now. So we'll watch as it goes along. Should be right in this bit, because it's straight. Yeah. So... What we were having before is the rear bogeys were... pulling everything off. this time. Yeah, because it knows that we're recording it. Yeah. Our dome's working its way off as well. Yeah. Okay, so it's alright now. Yes. Yeah. See if it makes its way round. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we've got our dome come off, but you can see that the front wheels have picked off. This is what we were finding earlier. It's jumped back on now. And it's only going on straight bits of track. Yeah, it's almost oh. pivoting on the middle driving yeah. wheel. Right, the back of the driving wheel. Yeah. Oh well. Except you like it running bunker first anyway. Yeah, so it's working fine like that, so yeah. yeah. Oh well, we just need to fix our dome and should be good. Yeah. Be what it is. It'll be what it is, however you want to. Hmm. Just put some music on. Or yeah, different cuts and things, don't Yeah. Start the other one. Oh, that's the little one, isn't it? That's a delta. Do you know how fast these used to go, or...? I think it was about 90, I think that was, which I was surprised I thought it was going to be like 100, like the speed and then I believe it was about 90, I think they, you know, if they were to take over from the A4s, A3s, sort of thing, if you get as fast, they would have been, you know, designed to go over, over the 100, but there must have been some reason. I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me Meant to be in the great outdoor, forever free.
take a step back to see the truth around you from a distance you can tell Next time I come down, not to put you in any pressure, what's the uh, next thing that we're um, going to be seeing on the layout? I want to get my static glass done, get all the scenery done over here. Yeah. Um, I bought all the all the bits I think, just about, okay. um, I need. What have you gone um, for? Um, well, I've got the some Bachman um, blended turf and fine, fine, yeah, blended turf earth blend, fine, mm. and then some fine turf soil. I see. Um, so the, the, that goes on, on first and then after you've done the static glass and left some um, gaps in the static glass you put this down in the, in the gaps. Okay. Um, I rather like the technique that Everard Junction used okay. on the branch line so yeah. I've gone for the bits that's what these he sort of said he used this and this together with the um, some a certain make of static glass some of the different colours so I was mm. going to get make sure I've got those those colours because it was really realistic it's a nice sort of olive sort of colour mm. so um, in fact that's come off again <laughs> so what's happened at this time what's it got stuck oh it's got it's stuck, stuck on its rear wheels on your point ah so that could be so my fault bit... yeah the bit attacked by the dojo the first but i think the first bogey wheel came off so um okay. we'll figure it out yeah. yeah, so you've got your Benadryl. So basically, Everard put a brilliant video out uh, recently, and I enjoyed watching it myself. And yeah. you're going for the exact same kind of. Yeah, so what like, he's like, been it, using. Just, it just looked lovely. So I yeah. thought, well, I'll go for the same colours he's used and the same kind of technique. Mm -hmm. um, so it's painting it all sort of a number, burnt umber colour. Yeah. A bit darker than that is. This stuff, you know, the, the soil on first, do the static grass, but leave gaps. And then in the, in the gaps, he um, put the um, put some of the, the earth blend in. Okay. And then the little bits. It looked looked very nice. So it looks like you might need more than just that. Yeah, pocket. I think I think so. But <laughs> just, to get, just to get started over here yeah. anyway. So you but said before that you're going to start with the back bit here with the building. Yeah, where that building um, is. But I mean, that's yeah. not going to stay there. Yeah, that's be fine. Trees, but, yeah. Um, I'll start over there where you can't see it so much. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully my technique might get better by the time I come That's out That's right, you have to yeah. do it all over again by the time you've got to this oh, part. Yes. But you'll be like, oh, that's no, terrible. That's useless and rip it all off. But mm. That's the next stage. Okay, well that's a bit of pressure for you for the next oh, time I come you. then. Yeah, yeah. See how it's got on and yeah. see how it looks. Mm. Okay, well thanks yeah. for having me. Okay, and, uh, pleasure. Yeah, see you next time. Bye. Bye. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I really enjoyed being there and I can't wait to go there again once he's done a bit more work. Like he said, he's going to do a bit more work on the, the grass, get that looking good because it's going to look awesome. Like that whole section going down and working away, like with the grass growing on it, get some trees in there, some bushes growing. I might even try and get over there when he's doing it. Maybe I can record him. I'll have a chat with him, find out if he's up for doing it when I'm there. So that would be really, really good. But with that inspiration in there of what needs to be done to his, that's what I've been doing on mine. So let's check that out. We'll go over to me um, working on it in the kitchen. It's always a nice place to do it now. Eventually it's going to go back up into the loft and I'll finish off certain bits because I know that when I pick it up at angle, put it into the loft, some bits might fall off, but I can always stick them back on. But I don't want to undo any good work I might have done. So let's go and enjoy that and I'll chat to you over the microphone in a bit. It's always good to tape it down, keep it all protected from the mess that you're about to make. So with that, I mix up some grey and black from the Hobbycraft paints. I think it's, I can't remember, it's just one of the greys that they have. I think when you go there, there's a, a few options, but all very similar so I mix that together and apply quite a lot of water when I do this as well it's a case of the plaster kind of soaking away what you've put on quite quickly so adding the water I actually sometimes if I put too much paint on just introduce some um, water again to just the paint that's already been applied and I can kind of smudge that around and it doesn't make it lighter it just seemed to just help it spread so that's one way of doing it Working around the whole layout, 
See, it's quite simple what I'm doing. I'm just applying a base coat, and that's my nice dark grey. The reason I've gone for this dark grey, it means that I've got the instant shadow uh, for once later on that I put my lighter colours. Just a few last bits to do. And then we're going to let that dry and uh, take a look at it. And to be honest, from when it was all the different colours of plasters and everything that was on there it did look messy but now you can actually really see this one nice looking rock form so I get my grey I get my kind of bath sponge which kind of a little bit like a sea sponge with the holes and I'll just splodge it around getting the top surfaces and work it and if you go too heavy on one bit you just smudge it around and just keep going keep going and keep going and next thing you know it's going to have a really nice look to it you see the uh, it's a bit yellowy in this picture that's because i did this very late at night and i didn't have my big light out at the time to help me but i think that you'll get the idea of what i'm doing so i do apologize for all the big shadows that come in here from my large head and hands and uh, but you'll see when we do it uh, in better light how it looks anyway but I went my way along, I splodged this along all over this grey and we start giving it highlight. We start being able to depict what is kind of the, the highlights and the low lights and what would be shadows. And I just keep working it until I get to the point that I feel like we're really showing up the rock form. And yeah, I was pretty happy with this. So then I introduced a bit of this kind of beigey colour and that's just to give a bit more depth to the colour so it's not just or the greys we got kind of the uh, the beige coming in that it still looks grey but it's got just a nicer look to it so you just keep working it into certain areas kind of working the tops of the rocks all the highlights that are going to be there and just pick areas that you want to do I'm going to be adding grass later so that will be um, sorted out and so any top levels that you're always going to be seen by the sun I thought I'd give some different colour greys because that colour won't be hidden um, by the sun so working this around you can see just picking areas leaving the highlights on the edges of the brighter colours and that's all you really need to do and it's peaceful and take your time and it's it's enjoyable if I'm honest I'd like to have a go at doing this again and I'd almost really want to do the <laughs> rocks that are on the layout in the loft which this is going to be joining eventually uh, and I think I will be applying some of these techniques to that uh, maybe in coming episodes, who will know? You can see now what I'm doing. I'm adding some lighter colours there just to pick out some other highlights. And this is a white, uh, basically. I kind of put that on and I smudge in some greys at the same time and you kind of give our rocks less of a uniform colour now. So there's a shade to them and just something more to catch the eye when you glance past it and make it feel like you've got box because otherwise you know what, what are we trying to achieve here so now I've got it to this stage I want to add some other bits of the layout so down here I put on some PVA glue and on top of that I'm going to put some brown scatter and the idea of this part just here is where I'm going to be having the let's say the mining wagons drop off all their coal or diamonds or minerals whatever it is that they find um, in the in the cave of uh, wonders, I have to name this cave um, at some point. Anyway, so we put this on, and all I do is I I pat it down, I squash it down, let it dry, and what I want to do is just around the edges. Um, I've, I just thought I'd add a bit more scatter. I haven't decided what I want to do with the edging yet. If I want to have it all over growing, or just have it is kind of this brown scatter. Anyway, on the top we'll start adding some of our fine turf from Woodland Scenics. This is called their green grass. Get it in a big tub. Uh, I got this from Alter Model Centre when I went there last time. It was £10.75. I thought it's not too steep. It's still a lot of money. If I was getting into this on a budget, I'd be kind of hesitant on what I'd buy. Um, but this big tub should last me a little while. Depends how big a job I take on. But with things like this, it will last you your entire layout. So it's worthwhile spending the money on, I'm sure. So as you can see I'm adding it onto certain top levels of surface where you would have seen bits of grass growing where it's been working its way in, in between the rocks because I'm sure there'll be some, uh, you know, I think soil or whatever going there. But as you can see I've just shaken that up and that kind of just allows it to, to refine itself and go onto other areas which I've put glue. 
and I finish off in various places throughout the other parts of the rock formations adding little bits here and there we just see how that looks I just kind of find the bits that have fallen over and drop them onto glue spots that I put on and we'll add some static grass to them afterwards using the WWS uh, products here I've got their glue it's what I brought I think about five or six months ago maybe more um, and I very much enjoyed using the product uh, with the static grass applicator and uh, you'll see me just dropping bits on here and there and all I do is I get brush out now and I'll just paint it around what I didn't talk about was I hoovered off the excess that I have um, on the board from when I initially put the scatter on and then I'll just kind of poke the glue in places that I want and I've got the applicator with some two millimeter um, pico um, seen you know the static grass it's uh, autumn grass is the name of it and I'll just kind of touch the uh, co um, crocodile clip on and then shake the applicator around so then it goes on standing up vertically hopefully or something around vertically I think most grass kind of kind of leans at a slight angle but we can't actually look at it that closely can we as I work my way round um, we need to get up to the cave area and I kind of pop it all on top and make it look nice so need to put a bit more glue on there find some places to put it over the top of the um, fine turf which feels like a waste because you're not going to see the fine turf but there will be areas that I haven't covered as you can see here so I want the fine turf to show up because it shows the graduation of the different thicknesses and lengths of the grass so as I come up here I give it a good old shaky shake and it goes up there and it looks, it looks nice Now the next step will be to use some 4mm long grass and I've got some that I'm not sure the make of it and I'm using the spray from WWS which I understand is like matte varnish or something like that but this comes out white and splodgy and stuff like that and we're going to use the 4mm grass to go over the top of that and it should look really really nice but the bags I have don't have names on so I'm just using a 4mm which is around the same kind of color but a little bit kind of more of the olive um, color to it when it goes on and it actually really has a nice look to it you could stop there but I fancied having a bit um, more length on there I kind of watched Luke Town and he obviously plays around with the surface a little bit so it's not completely uniform put a bit more on and I'll go for some six millimeter stuff and that's more of a, a yellowy grass it's a bit more straw like um, as you'd notice in a field from a distance away and I thought I'd do that more towards where the rocks are and at the moment it looks like I'm kind of covering everything which I am but when I get the hoover out later I'll suck away the excess and just kind of put it in different places um, so it's just growing so it looks like a slightly out of control kind of uh, meadowish look I don't know start picking it picking out names so then the last bit I did was I've had one that was more brown, more like a autumn burnt kind of grass. I thought a little bit more over that. So I gave that a squirt and then it was a bit longer again. Um, but the darker color kind of really gave some depth to the color that's on the layout. And I'm only doing the back part because I will be finishing the front at some point. But when I put this on, it really changed it for me. As you can see you can add that, it's got like a reddish brownish tint to it and after it's all done, after it's all dry I get the old hoover out and it starts, or Dyson, uh, vacuum cleaner, whatever you want to call them and uh, it worked its magic, and it's sucking away all the excess there were some, uh, some areas that I had to go in with the uh, something pointy and uh, a hook out um, where it kind of stayed on uh, out of just defiance to the power of the hoover end but I can have to clean up around it and I'm I'm happy. See the applicator over there, worked a treat. Obviously I didn't have to do too much in what we were doing here, but I was happy. So what this is missing now is some trees. I've got these uh, whilst again I was in the Wellingborough model shop and I uh, popped them down as a something around a tenner for the three. And uh, I'm making a little space so I've got the glue to stick to something, not the static grass on top. And I'll splodge it in there and let that dry and then I'll just do uh, two more 
to go with it. I just fancied something. I can always add more later. I'd like to add a little shed eventually. That would be nice as well in there. Some trodden ground to go with it. Some rabbits, squirrels and whatever else we think of at the time. But we don't have to do it all in now. Uh, the beauty of all this, as I've always said to you, and as you know, it's, it's the, the, that process of getting to it and reaching that goal. And the goal is not to finish, in my view, because that would be boring and I'd have nothing to do. I'd have to start again. But I'm now adding in some uh, forest blend underbrush. This is the, the really dark um, the kind of foliage that goes in there. And um, it says on the packet, great for modelling bushes, shrubs and tree foliage. Um, and it's from Mortal Models, and so again, it's like 5.75 uh, for a packet in... I didn't use much of it to do all this, but I kind of thought I'd run this around all the main kind of um, where the, the bottom of the board meets any of the surfaces and just to give it that kind of um, dark starting point because what we could do then is add some lighter colours later on if you want to have things growing from it and uh, going from there really. So with, with that done, I'd work my way around really. I'm just going to put some of this olive green underbrush that I've got and uh, put that under all the trees so it gives it, I don't know, just hides the base a bit and shows that the bushes have grown up a lot and then put it on top of some of the um, the forest blend underbrush that I had and just start making everything blend in with each other and uh, I think at the moment still the colours are too prominent but I was going to come along with some other bits at a later stage and see what I can do to really give it a look that's well more typical to if you if you saw that kind of area with overgrown grass trees and stuff and it's very good because we can look at bushes and um, how trees are and stuff like that in, in the wild so I'll go for a walk and get some inspiration I'm sure and think about how else I can do this so really it's a case of just adding more glue throwing it on and seeing if it looks all right and if it does look good leave it how it is and if it's not we can either add more other things or we take off what we've already put on and as you can see here I'm wedging bits and cracks that are up on the mountain so then I have bits sticking out of the side of the mountain where a bush would have been growing in a hole that it could find somewhere to grow as you can see just more and more just popping up on here and I'm really pleased with how it's starting to look this last little bit actually I've got this uh, foliage clump clusters um, in light green uh, clump clusters or foliage clusters I've got two types and you can kind of glue a big piece on there it just comes off as one chunky piece and again it's just adding another shade there but anyway back to me in my room I've enjoyed myself I don't know what you think but I'm really pleased when I look at that I just feel um, not let's say inspired by my own work but I feel very driven um, and yeah I want to add the other bits and finish them off but that requires time and time isn't always something that I have lots of but when I do get some you stop you enjoy it life seems to go a lot slower when you're doing things that you really enjoy or maybe it's faster I don't know I seem to run out of time when I'm doing it but I feel peaceful when I do it same as what I'm sure a lot of you are um, feeling like when you do it so first of all thank you very much for watching the episode it's uh, always good to share, enjoyable to share, and I always enjoy the comments. If you're ever thinking about why am I doing something a certain way, if you haven't caught the older episodes, fire a question, or even just check out the other episodes anyway. Um, the other bit to say is thank you very much for my subscribers. I'm getting to a larger count all the time. I'm at 3,400 and... Um, no. Yeah, 3,410 or something like that at the moment. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of cool when you see that number grow and it gives you that motivation to do a few more videos. So I must say thank you to my subscribers and also my patrons who have been following me now. I'm up to nine, which is very nice. You know who you are, you're down here, you've been supporting me now. I get messages from you um, and encouragement and I put little posts up there um, and put my videos up early so I can find out if I've made any mistakes or whatever if I have time to put it up early that is anyway um, sometimes I have to put it up the same day it's uh, depends how busy we've been 
But anyway, thank you to all of you for watching. I'll see you all soon. And uh, on the next episode, episode 50, um, we'll see what we can do for that. Anyway, see you soon. Ciao.